Hello everyone, Sheila back again. Welcome to my channel. I'm doing a little bit of the little cardigan, but I'm going to finish this row and put this down because I have had happy meal today. Nearly finished. There's not many stitches on here, so it doesn't take long to get to the end of the row. And I'll tell you about, show you this later on. At first, I had some Happy Meal. I know it's Happy Meal because it says it has my name and address on there and underneath info, Happy Meal for Sheila. <laughs> I have a feeling I might know who this is from because um, there was a lady who bought some of my knitting patterns and said something about um, some Happy Meal as well. So I have opened this and I have opened up this but I haven't looked inside yet because it was very sticky trying to get it open but I've managed I think oh no it's sticking inside as well <laughs> see what's in here <laughs> no <laughs> I can't believe this, <laughs> Colette. I'm sure it's from you, Colette. I have to look up the the statement here. Oh yes, it is. It's got a name on the um. It's from Wool Warehouse. It's from Colette. It is from Colette. <laughs> and yo, I said something in one of my videos about these stitch holders I wish they came in single sizes so you could just buy what you wanted and all the only ones I've ever seen all come in sets of about three I never never thought to look on Wool Warehouse but anyway Colette sent me I don't know how many here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i can have ten little things on the go with these holy stitch holders <laughs> oh thank you very much colette it's very thoughtful of you i thought for a minute it was another when the um the man knocked on my door with it well actually there was a one from the royal meal first I just got inside the house and there was another knock on the door and I seen the, um, the DPD van outside and there was another one and I'm thinking thinking Lynn <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself before I opened it and found out what was in it and who who had sent it um, I'm seeing if Lynn send me anything else she'll be bankrupting herself all the stuff she's been sending me <laughs> but it's not off you Lynn it's off Colette so I kind of get over that thing. <laughs> oh, I've got plenty small stitch mark stitch holders, not markers. And this is another. It's kind of Happy Meal, but it's something I ordered myself because I was given a, um, an Amazon gift card. Um, now I'm not sure whether it's a lady or a gentleman because the name of this person is Dale, and Dale is. I think it's male and a female name. So if you're watching Dale, put a comment on and tell me whether you're a man or a woman. <laughs> but I ordered this, it gave me the um the gift card and I looked on Amazon and this is something I was after I saw, so I ordered it for myself. It's the Addy. Not circular needles, but they've got the, the tube on the end of the um, the thing. I'll take it out of the packet and show. The information with it was for people who do not like circular needles, but want long cords. Now I'll have to put them into hot water to um, thingy because I curled up. But that's 
instead of circular needles you've got the same thing you know as what you have on each end of the circular needle only there's an end for the stop your stitches coming off and you just knit them like ordinary needles so you've got a longer length there i'll show mine i think these are 50 centimeter so if you put them against my needle my needle is 35 centimeters i think so that's a little bit longer quite a bit longer there so i was intending to do some more um baby blankets or even just blanket things for to put on your knee not just for babies for um grown-ups because i did one recently i have a friend who's in a wheelchair and i did one for um i gave it to her for a um i think it was her birthday actually <laughs> i gave it to her for some reason for her birthday and she says it's lovely to put on her knee when she was in the wheelchair because she was quite cold so i figured like i don't mind so much the um the chow Gu ones they are okay but the other ones just go like that the whole time when you're um you're knitting with them even though i put them in hot water and try to straighten them i have some zing ones and i do not like them but these i'm going to have to i know i'll have to put them into um some hot water to straighten them but they like knitting with two straight needles only you've got a longer a longer length there so that was what i got with a my own happy meal with a gift card from deal have to put them down it's going to be awkward getting them back in in there and i got them from a place called let's see here laughing hens somebody did tell me about this um i think on um one of my videos i think they put the um i get who it was but somebody did mention laughing hens but they're very hard to come by these the only ones i could find at the time were this size and i think there was nine millimeter but i didn't want these are seven millimeter i didn't want nine millimeter they are a bit thick i wouldn't go knit it with any thicker than about eight millimeter which is what i done the last baby blankets in but the other baby blankets i've done before i've done with seven millimeter so these are going to be better and the only other ones i could find were like two millimeter or three millimeter really thin ones if they'd had only 325 and four millimeters i would have bought more but this was all i had but i will keep looking for them and these are it says made it made in germany oh and i've got the sizes on on written on the cord here it's got addy made in germany seven millimeter 50 centimeters us 1075 20 inch i think that must mean 20 inch the whole where's my tape measure <laughs> i'm never up on all these things sit down oh yes pack 20 inch the whole thing is 20 inches it's 50 centimeters it's 20 inches i still work in inches i don't work in centimeters i haven't got a clue what size something is in centimeters in length and that if you're looking in length and i've got a cup of tea and i'm gonna have a drink of it like sort of letting it get cold so that's my happy meal today I'll put all this stuff away. Put all those <laughs> stitch holders back in this bag. I think I have about two stitch holders actually that size. And even on um they come in handy for holding stitches on tops of sleeves as well because um i use a sometimes i use a safety pin this is one of these type of you know safety pins like that and usually when i'm putting the stitches back onto something i usually end up sticking the end in my finger because it is point pointed you know so they would be handy for putting on sleeves as well not just on the the back of something 
if you have you know sometimes you have quite a few stitches some some things i do i had about 15 stitches for the sleeve away could have done with something like that i have one smaller than that i think that's all but with sleeves you have two sleeves so you need two so i'm putting all this down and i'm going to sort out what else i'm telling you about Down there, sorted out after. And I have been knitting, got the back done. That's one of those stitch holders, but I think that might be a little. I'm going to have a look. I think it may be a little bit bigger than that one, actually. These ones, actually. Oh no, it's not it's about the same size. Slightly fraction smaller that's the the one i you i'm using and mine is just a fraction bigger than that so they are perfect for little things like this i think that's one of the only one that's about the only one i've got that size i think i have a couple about that size and the rest are all massive you know, far too big the rest for anything i do i've got them in my you know, ones like that, that's too big. I have some even bigger ones like that. You know, they all seem to come, they just come in packs like that. We get one like that, one like that. And I think that green one was one. That was a set of three, I think I bought. It cost me about three pound or something, or about three pound for a set of three like that. <laughs> put, put that back in the bag. <laughs> So I've done the back on this little 16 inch. It looks narrow when you look at it because it's because of the um, the rib. When it's worn, it stretches. Because the rib, it's, it's not a proper rib, it's a mock rib, you know, where you do a pearl row. So it doesn't pull it in quite as tight as it would if it was a proper, uh, proper ribbed one. So that is the back to the 16 and that's how the the colors have come out on it and the bottom started with a um like a like a rust color a very rust color on the bottom then a purplish color but when i started the way i put the knitting there it is when i started the back the front one of the fronts i'm just knitting it as it is because i'm not sure whether there's enough to um to match the colours up and that. So that started off there with a little bit green, a bit cream, and then it went on to green. So when I'm doing that colour there, there'll be a bluish colour next and then that tan colour. Might work out the same on, on both. If it's only maybe a little bit for me to start the next piece on the same colour, I'll probably take it off. That's that one in the meantime. And this is how far, which I'll be starting on this one soon because um, I'm going to get my lunch. But I have started. I've used up the little bit blue I had. I've left it on there to fasten another, another ball of blue in. But that's how far I've got with that. When I get to the length, about 12 inches, I'm going to take the stitches in, a few stitches in on each side. So that when it's finished, the sides, those sides will go like that on each side. And I'll do a, um, a stitch around so you can see which is the, the base on it. I'm not sure what length this is either now, what, what I've actually done. I don't think it's 12 inches yet, but it's 9 inches. 9 inches, so I have another 3 inches to do to bring it up to 12 and then start bringing in on the sides. And then I'll do about 3.5 inches from there and take it back out again. And then another 12 inches up the other side and then I'll sort out the, um, the handles on it and... And I'll lay it down flat in one piece 
and then probably stitch the lining to it before I sew it all up, but leave a little edge for sewing the um, the knitted part up. So that'll be that when I've sorted it. And just shove it back in here for now until I get round to it. Put the crochet hook in. And I did a little bit more of my sweater last night. I am doing just a little pattern on. I'm doing a... It's like the rosebud, the bottom part of the rosebud lace pattern that I do. Just the two little holes. That's I thought with this being the way I'm doing the, um, the back. When I do the back and I bring the, the sides in a little bit, there'll be sort of like a panel down the, the middle and I thought it might not look right, just plain like so. That's why I thought I'd do the little bit. Just, I don't know what to call this. This one is just like, <laughs> like two little eyes, doesn't it? I think I did ask one time on a video quite some time ago what anybody would call this pattern. But it's just the bottom part of the rosebud lace, that's all it is, the, the two little holes. And I used to do a lot of um, cardigans years ago on my knitting machine. And a lot of people, besides the rosebud lace, they used to like this one as well. You have a big, you know, quite a lot of space between them, not, not at all close together. So that's what I'm doing on mine. And I've never tried to put it into this. <laughs> I'll have to fold it in and see. I can't really do it with... Um, spread it out with the on one needle here but it's going to if you can see it's going to come in that's one piece save come in like that so it'll be like a panel in the middle of the front and the same on that side I'm holding it upside down to show you, but it'd be better when I finish it. Um, when I finished it, I will sew the shoulders and the two side seams up because when I come to put the sleeves in, where normally on one like this is set in sleeve, you would set the um, the sleeves in so that the seams met each other, the sleeve on the seams and the side, but that won't be like this because I'll have to set the, that is where the the shape, that was the, um, the cast off stitches, that was meant for the front and the back so the seam on the sleeve will have to go in the middle of that that's the whole thing we'll have to go about the middle somewhere i have to work that out so i'm going to have to set the sleeve in in one round instead of the way i normally do it flat i normally sew the shoulders and then i have the the whole piece is all flat and i pin the um the sleeve to it before i do this um the seams on them but I'm having to do this one a different way because of the way I'm doing the front. So that's just a little bit of information. If anybody understands what I'm talking about. I do ramble on a bit, you know, like. As my son often tells me. <laughs> but anyway, that's in that bag there. Where I get my little knitting out while I'm talking. Got all ends of that all over the place. There it is. But I was out in my garden this morning. I got up early and I was in yesterday cutting the large lawn in the garden. And I thought to myself, I'm going to get up early today because I don't know what the weather's going to be like. Sometimes it doesn't see a rain, but it does rain. And I wanted to get the the small lawn in my back garden cut and I wanted to go in the front garden and do the lawn in the front garden as well because the grass has just grown far too high because it's a lot later in the year than what I normally cut the grass the first cut of the um the grass so I was out early this morning as soon as I had my breakfast I went straight out into the the garden and got the lawn mower out of my 
somebody mentioned um, when I said I put my lawnmower in the back passage. It's not the passage in the house, Lisa. It's the passage. I have a passageway where I go out of my back, my back kitchen door. And then I have a passageway that goes into my outhouse and there's a, um, an outside toilet and um, what used to be our old coal house when we used to have coal fires. And that's a, just a back passage that's actually outside, but it's all covered in. That was where I left my lawnmower. I didn't leave it in, the, uh, in a passage inside the house. I think that's what she must have thought when, because of what she said on the, um, the comment, you left your lawnmower where? As you had way in capital letters. But um, like I seen, I went straight out after I had my breakfast and probably about half seven. <laughs> At least both near my neighbours, both sides of me, they wouldn't have been late getting up this morning. <laughs> I had the lawn work on half past seven in the back garden and it was absolutely freezing. You know, I was out yesterday and it was a lovely day. It was nice and warm. And I was thinking, you know, I don't need, I, I always put a t-shirt and I have a t-shirt under my jumper here. You can see. That's what I've been doing and all, all winter I have a t-shirt on underneath my um, jumper because it's so cold. But it was so warm yesterday and I was thinking to myself, oh, I think I can stop putting the t-shirt under my cording. It's getting nice and warm. And it was a shock this morning because it was freezing. I went out into the back garden and I just had, didn't have these on, I had the dirty clothes on I had yesterday when I was working because uh, I was going to change them all afterwards, go in the shower and change and everything. So I went back in the house and I put the t-shirt on underneath my jumper and I've got a great big chunky cardigan that I knit about 30 years ago and I only wear it in odd time. Put that on as well and went out and I cut both the lawns, the little lawn. The one in the front garden as well and then I swept up all the mess because I never swept up any mess yesterday. There was grass all over the paths and pulled one or two weeds up. But there's only, in my age, there's only so many things my body can do. Only so many times I can bend down. But I was looking at my rhubarb patch and it's some of them are starting to go to seed so I'm going to have to sort, sort that out and pull them off because I want the rhubarb grown right up until July because you're not supposed to take it off after July. Get what I can out of it now. But that was as much as I could manage and I was back in the house by about 11 o'clock. So I went in the shower and I, my bedroom window, I always open my bedroom window in the morning, but I had been in the front garden cutting the lawn and there's a, a border underneath my window where years ago I put five, there were little bulbs that looked like little onions, miniature onions. And the packet I got them off, they had lovely flower on the, um, the picture and I thought, oh, they'll be nice. So I put five, these five in along, I just put, you know, spaced them out along the, the board, on my border underneath the, um, my front window. Well, the first year they grew, they were lovely, this flower, but they had a smell of onions on them. And I realised this plant must belong to the onion family. Because when I cut them, cut them down, you could the stink of onions off them. And I tried the next year. There was loads of them come up all over that border. And apparently they grow from underneath, from the bulb. You get loads of tiny little bulbs grow. And then when the flower dies off, the seeds on them, look like little tiny miniature onions again and they spread all over and they just covered the whole of that board. I know I can't get rid of them. The only way I can get rid of them is to get rid of the soil. So I just didn't want them multiplying anymore. So when I cut the grass, I just cut all those as well because it looked like thick grass along the thing. But there were these stalks of these plants. The smell of the onions when I went upstairs, when I went into the shower. I sorted my clothes out and put them, I walked into the bedroom and the smell of onions was coming with that border being underneath the windows and the smell had drifted up into the bedroom and the bedroom just stinks of onions and I can smell it down here in this in my living room as well. 
It'll probably take a couple of days for the, the smell to die off them, but they might look nice, but they don't smell nice. So that's my video for today. A little bit happy mail and just a little chat and thumbs up. Bingo tonight. I'll catch you later. So bye for now.